Okay, hello again everybody. This is going to be a two-part series, which I did not have intentions on doing. But as I'm learning, you guys are learning, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So one of the viewers had a few great suggestions that will help improve this system, help you guys uh, improve your systems, and maybe we'll all learn in the process. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, you guys want to make sure that the cases aren't live. I already did this ahead of time. Get yourself a little tester. Yeah, they have these little light testers. You basically can just touch it here and do the testing. I have a double one where I have to actually use the wires, so I'm not going to do that on the camera. Number one of the updates. This is a double pull, but they are single pull breakers. The one viewer suggested that you actually put a double pull breaker on this, given that it's a 240. Why do that? As opposed to one, one side, remember, functions on one pole, the other side functions on the other pole. So what's the difference if it triggers? Well, the difference if it triggers is, if it triggers, you've got an issue, right? And if it triggers and you've got an issue, you don't want any electricity going anywhere. So you're better off having it trigger the other one as well at the same time. That way you're cutting off the electricity 100%. I mean, if you could, it'd be nice to trigger your entire breaker panel shut off switch so that you know that there's no electricity going anywhere. But that's not the case in the situation uh, that we have on these panels. So I am going to upgrade this to an actual double pole. For those that don't know, double pole, well, it's a double pole, but they're not actually connected. So they're single breakers functioning like double pole. This is double pole. You see they don't uh, separate. Another issue that I really want to touch base on is the grounding. Now, one of the viewers commented on grounding. Let's get a, a close up here so we can understand. This is my main circuit breaker panel that functions for the house. Now, as you can see, these are floating neutrals here. There's no bonding screw bonding to this case. So you have a neutral running along with the ground. Well, where's the ground? Well, the ground goes out to the meter, and there's a uh, small panel there at the meter that's an on-off, and it's actually grounded there. And that particular small panel is actually bonded with the screw to the panel, and then that goes to a grounding rod outside. So this is functioning as my main panel. This is functioning as my sub panel coming off of the inverters. I have a floating neutral here and I've also put a small bus bar here that functions as a ground now I did bond this neutral to the back side of that case why did I do that this is the big question I have in the video for anybody that wants to weigh in on it ideally you don't want to have a ground or a bond screw grounded to the back of that case on a sub panel because you could ultimately make a big circuit so you could make a circuit here going through the ground, going through your entire equipment, every th through the house, everything, going through this ground that goes all the way out to the meter. So you'd have one big live circuit in the event that you had a, a short circuit, which is uh, extremely dangerous. My biggest concern and question here, obviously, is one, <clears throat> hey, let's test this to see if there's any amps coming through it. We test that by going to the uh, neutral, or the, I'm sorry, the ground bus bar here, which I have uh, one of these wires coming down. Comes down to, to here. I have a AC DC C clamp multimeter here that we can test this. We are on AC, and as you can see, you have 0 0.01, 0 0.02 amps coming through there. Sure, everybody's going to ask, well, you don't have any juice on there. I, there, there actually is juice, there's a bunch of lights on there. But we're going to turn on a 240 volt electric heater that I have just to make sure that there's nothing coming through there. Might get a little noisy because my inverters, I imagine, are going to kick on. So I'm going to go over here, turn on my 240 volt heater. Wham! There goes the inverters. Let's go down here and check our amp meter so we can see that the ground actually isn't carrying any of those amps. Well, we can check and see if this thing is even working. We can stick it on the actual hot wire. It looks like a neutral, but it's actually hot because it's a 240. You can see there's 13 amps going through that wire. You can see that there is 13.5 going through that wire. And <clears throat> this actually comes back to 
the ground here. So you have the hot, you have a hot going to your 240 breaker, and then you have the ground coming here from the same set of wires here, comes down and actually connects to that ground. So I know that the ground's not feeding or dissipating any of the electricity. That's a great thing. So my question is, going out to those professionals here, I'm trying to understand in regards to that bonding screw that goes from the floating neutral bar to the back side of that case, given that the main panel is actually bonded out at the uh, meter, and this panel is not bonded because it's bonded out there. So the entire house circuit goes through here, and then the bond actually is outside. You got the one bond, that's perfect. Now, I'm bonding this one here, and you can see that there's no amps going through that ground wire. I understand the theory of not having the bond screw in there, and it doesn't affect anything when I take it out and I put it in. Well, that doesn't rule out that it's not dangerous, but my biggest question is, this is action, this is a sub-panel, at least that's what it's classified as. The inverters on this solar system are kind of acting as a relay, at least we think they are, right? This is functioning to put electricity to a separate part of my house entirely. If I unbond that, I have to rely on the fact that it's going to go through this system, it's going to go through my inverters, it's going to go down through my inverters, through that breaker, through the main panel, panel breaker box, out to the electric box, and go to the grounding rod. Now, I'm putting all of the trust in the system that the inverters are actually going to do that correctly. Hopefully somebody can actually uh, weigh in on that, give us a little more insight if I'm completely off Kelter here, off base, and I don't understand how it's working. Or do I understand how it's working, and do these actual inverters route that ground through out through your main breaker box because they are the hybrid, they are connected to the main breaker box. Do they actually route it and go out to that ground? If so, in theory, when I connect that ground screw from the neutral floating bus bar to the back side of that case, theoretically you should see amps on that ground. I don't. I probably am going to disconnect it, but I don't want to disconnect it because if I do, I have to be absolutely sure that those inverters are actually going to route that ground in the case of a circuit break and go outside through all the components outside and actually ground. So hopefully some of the professionals can weigh in here, put a little more insight into exactly what I'm explaining here for us guys that are doing these sub panels with these solar systems connecting to grid. It'd sure be nice to get a little bit of clarity on that particular point. Again, the disclaimer. I am not an electric, electrical engineer, I am not an electric uh, professional, I am learning right along with all of you, safety is always at the utmost concern here, complacency will turn you into a piece of bacon, so definitely stay alert, don't get your head too close to anything, you should be working with gloves, uh, test all of your electronics, all your metal with something before you even touch it, because if you have an issue, these things are going to be charged with electricity. Anything metal is going to be charged that's on your circuit. So first and foremost, always be safe. Uh, thanks for watching. Let's uh, keep the videos coming, I guess, and learn as we go. You guys are going to learn right along with me. So uh, it's been fun. Thanks for the supporters, and thanks for weighing in and taking the time to actually write me a message and uh, tell me what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. I really appreciate it. Thanks.